that America has entered its worst ever social, political, and economic era, combining all of those. Politically, you just have to look at the last few weeks. Uh, and that I was saying that long before what transpired. Socially is a uh, is is just as bad, and I think economically uh, we're going to see that uh, the sins of the past, which continue almost unabated, and that's mostly regarding debt and spending more than we have. See, it was one thing ten or twenty years ago when people were wanting, oh, we had five trillion in debt, we had ten trillion. We're getting now within reasonable expectation to the the fail safe point. We passed it. And now how bad of a penalty we're going to pay for it is the only thing that's left in my mind. Debt burdens have grown so large in part because of the cost of the pandemic that they now pose a growing threat to living standards even in rich economies, including the United States. Yet, in a year of elections around the world, politicians are largely ignoring the problem, unwilling to level with voters about the tax increases and spending cuts needed to tackle the deluge of borrowing. In some cases, they're even making profligate promises that could, at the very least, jack up inflation again and could even trigger a new financial crisis. Peter Grandich, author and former head of investment strategy for a leading New York stock exchange firm, asserts that America has entered its worst ever period of social, political, and economic turmoil. He observes that the political landscape has been problematic for some time, as recent events have shown. Socially, the challenges are equally grave. Grandich also forecasts that the economic issues, particularly those related to debt and excessive spending, are likely to worsen in the coming years. In the United States, the federal government will spend $892 billion in the current fiscal year on interest payments, more than it has earmarked for defense, and it will be approaching the budget for Medicare and health insurance for older people and those with disabilities. Next year, interest payments will top $1 trillion on the national debt of more than $30 trillion which is roughly equal to the size of the U.S. economy, according to the Congressional Budget Office, Congress's fiscal watchdog. According to Grandick, within the next three to five years, as the national debt approaches $50 trillion, servicing the debt will consume a large portion of the country's income. This will reduce the government's ability to provide services, forcing people to become more self-reliant. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. America has entered its worst ever social, political, and economic era, combining all of those. Politically, you just have to look at the last few weeks. Uh, and that I was saying that long before what transpired. Socially is, a, uh, is, a, is just as bad. And I think economically, uh, we're going to see that uh, the sins of the past, which continue almost unabated, and that's mostly regarding debt and spending more than we have is coming back to Rue. So I would say in the biggest of picture, looking at just the United States for a moment, we'll see a lot of rhetoric. Obviously, we're in the political season. It's changing. It's the old saying when you used to go in, you you can buy a program. Yeah, you can buy a program, but you got to get an eraser because so many things are changing in just a matter of days and all. But I, I do think it's it's quite troublesome for somebody who's been at this for 40 years. If you look at the bottom 50% of earners in the United States, they're all underwater. They are literally spending credit cards to buy food and pay for clothing and things of that nature. There's, there's two different economies right now. The very high part of the pyramid is almost unaffected. The, the top third of the pyramid people in terms of income and wealth they're struggling, but not yet to the point where they're personally suffering, so they're not too worried at the moment. But by and large, the largest single part of Americans are suffering and suffering greatly. And we know that because 65% of all Americans are working paycheck to paycheck with no room for error and no ability to create extra dis discretionary income to pay for the cost of what we're going to pay for in terms of all this debt. And that's why to answer your other part of the question is eventually politicians will inflate their way. Up. It would have to be such a severe depression and deflationary period for a generation that I don't think any politician uh, could see that because they would be overthrown so quickly. So it will be inflationary and it will be like third world's war back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And so while inflation may have tempered at the moment, eventually in the next three to five years when this debt issue comes home to roost because by then, according to our Congressional Budget Office, 
we'll be well on our way to $50 trillion in hard debt. And to service that, we'll take almost half of the income that the United States has been taking in on a yearly basis just to pay the interest rate. So the government's not going to be able to provide services in the manner that people have come accustomed to. So the other thing people have to grow get accustomed to is less dependence on government and more dependence on themselves and being self-sufficient. But the younger people I talk to, the less inclined they're willing to do that. And I think that's part of the overall problem that we're going to face, not tomorrow, not next month, but in just a few years from now. And let me just add this. I don't want to run on here with my mouth, but I just want to tell you this. See, it was one thing 10 or 20 years ago when people were wanting, oh, we had $5 trillion in debt. We had $10 trillion. We're getting now within reasonable expectation, the fail-safe point. We passed it. How bad of a penalty we're going to pay for it is the only thing that's left in my mind. America is approaching the point in the big cycle of internal politics, where people should be prepared for the arrival of increased conflict, potentially even some form of civil war. In a recent Wall Street Journal poll, former President Donald Trump holds a slim two-percentage point lead over Democratic U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris. The poll, released on Saturday showed Trump leading Harris 49% to 47%, reflecting a tighter race compared to earlier surveys. Trump's narrow edge over Harris suggests a highly competitive race as the 2024 presidential election approaches. Grandich argues that the current political instability is not being adequately addressed by Wall Street, which he feels is complacent about the potential ramifications. He warns that significant market shifts could occur after the election, depending on who wins or remains in power. He believes that making Harris president rather than just vice president could be part of a broader political strategy and that the current political maneuvering resembles a real-life scenario more dramatic than anything portrayed in movies. Now let's redirect our attention to a video. I believe come election day, at least one of the two leading candidates won't be on the ballot and possibly both. And sure enough, one is officially off now as we speak, and one came pretty close to being off, unfortunately. I think no one on this earth can now say with any certainty what may occur. If you think of just what happened in the last few weeks, what happened with, with, with Trump and now all the potential concerns about either the world's worst handling of it without any conspiring to hopefully have the man dead or a combination of that or outright trying to kill the man. And then look at what's transpired with Biden and how he was propped up. And then a debate that realistically no one understood that. You don't mind digressing because this has been a pet, pet thing of mine. Uh, why did they ha allow him to go into a debate so early? I believe he was set up to fail. I believe that was what they recognized. And as you and I uh, uh Tape this. I know you put it out in a few days. God knows what the answer is going to be. But for five days up until now, we haven't even seen the president. And uh, it's very unusual, all the things that are transpiring. And then when you throw in the election frauds or potential frauds and why were immigrants allowed and the ballinging, I don't know how anybody could statistically use anything that we were used to. I think anything we could say is possible. I mean, you made a good point. Even at this point, one of them or both of them may not be come election day. It, it's and and that goes back to what we talked about earlier, Dan, and that this complacency to to have this much unsettledness about our political future, and yet there's supposed to be financial investing guys that are supposed to be fiduciary duties and all, and think about what in a year's time how differently politically. Think about this. What there's a huge difference now for what Harris is known if she is the. Uh, person for what she knows and thinks versus what Trump thinks. It's there's there's no commonality. So how do you go and make some real big commitments now, or keep the commitments you have, knowing right. that one gets in versus the other? So yeah, come after election day, there may be a dramatic shift in the markets depending on who wins uh, or who's still there to win. So I, I think this political uncertainty is not being given any real concern by the don't worry, be happy crowd on Wall Street. And I wouldn't begin to risk a dime that I have to make a wager on anything politically now, because it, it just just what's transpired in these last few weeks. Dan, if I'm China, I'm Russia, I'm Iran, 
I know who I'm rooting for. <laughs> I know formally who I would choose to go up against as so-called commander in chief as president versus another person. If she just stays the vice president through this, gets the nomination and so forth, it's still the attachment to Biden. If they can make him step down or force him to step down or there's a reason for him to step down, put her as the president now. I've always said this, Dan, people know this from the day he was elected. I said the producers of Weekend at Bernie's and the movie The Sting had to be envious of what they did in real life, how they put this thing over. And that's what they need to do now. They need to put her over or attempt to put her over. And she'd be much better to be put over as the president than just still the vice president. So that's the other surprise that still may come in the next several days that we learn that Biden is going to completely step down or needs to step down. The debt rose by nearly $8 trillion during Trump's time in office. Biden is on pace to oversee a similar rise. In total, the national debt has ballooned by more than 70% over the last 7.5 years, fueled by a flood of new spending. And these obligations have stretched back decades. Furthermore, after weeks of mounting pressure, United States President Joe Biden dropped out of the November presidential election on Sunday. Biden's withdrawal from the race opens up questions about who might replace him on the Democrat ticket less than four months before the vote. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.